Hello again, I am Blunty. This is me playing my PlayStation 5 inside my Quest 3 VR headset. And I can do this in VR mode in my holodeck. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. Or I can do it in mixed reality mode so I can see my own room. Now, what you are seeing here is just video recorded using the headset's own built-in video capture system, so the quality is a bit low. And of course, you can't see everything I can see inside the headset in VR mode, where I can get a much wider field of view, but, you know, you get the point. You can see how it's working. A few weeks back, Mark Zuckerberg beep-booped his collective consciousness onto a stage, set the release for the Quest 3, and spoke a bit about what's coming in updates in December. Among these was an official partnership with Microsoft. Is that X -Cl uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming is coming to Quest in December. To bring Xbox Cloud Gaming and Streaming to the MetaQuest ecosystem, which is pretty damn cool. And considering how popular using flat screen applications has become on the Quest 3, especially in mixed reality mode, in the couple of weeks since launch, seriously, social media is filled with people doing all kinds of nutty stuff. Stuff like Xbox Cloud Gaming seems like a killer app to sell these VR headset things to, like, like regular boring people. It's something I spoke on in detail in a different video recently. But while Xbox came to the party, PlayStation is still out in the cold, which is dumb. With a bit of luck, PlayStation are already making moves to make this happen on the Quest 3, but we all know Sony and we can't really count on that, can we? Anyway, even if Sony are too much of a penis hammer to just give their users this functionality for the Quest 3, we can do it ourselves, can't we? And it's a pretty simple process. On paper, it gets a little annoying in places, but we'll get to that. But if you find this guide interesting or useful, a quick little cheers blunty is available in the form of that YouTube thumb shape button down there. Go ahead, give it a poke. Thank you. So, step one, you're going to need SideQuest installed. If you've not yet come across it, SideQuest is, as the name cleverly implies, an app designed to make side loading apps to your Quest headsets simple and easy. And just so all our bases are covered here, side loading is what we call installing an app to a device using a second local device. This is often done to install things not available on otherwise locked down systems with only a singular official storefront. Like, for example, your MetaQuest VR headset. SideQuest has been around for a decade now and has evolved into a pretty damn robust system. It's, it's been a while since I've last used it and it is really smooth now. I won't cover the details of installation here as the app itself is pretty straightforward in guiding you through that and their site itself links to several community-made tutorials if you need more help than that. So we can save a little time by skipping that. Next, you'll need the install file for the official PlayStation Remote Play app for Android. There are a few different places you can obtain Android APK files, that's application package, but one of the more popular and trusted is APK Pure. That's where I got mine from. Oh, and yeah, by the way, if you're not already aware, the Quest headsets burn Android as their fuel under the hood, which yes, means you can use this side learning technique for all kinds of Android apps. Although keep in mind, the Quest does not have Google Play services, so there are some limits in what's going to work properly. And speaking of limits, while you are loading things with SideQuest, I strongly recommend chucking the Firefox browser onto your Quest. For a start, it's just simply a better browser than Meta's built-in one. Secondly, you're probably going to need it. Capital N, double E, D, need it just to log in to the PS Remote Play app for the first time. I don't know why, but for some reason, no matter what I did, the built-in browser would not work for this. So, once you've installed what you need, bring up your app library inside the Quest UI as you normally would, but your side-loaded apps won't show up here with the rest of the icons. Instead, you'll need to click on the search bar and then use the drop-down menu to the right of that to ask it to show you apps from unknown sources. I suggest running Firefox first and use its options page to make it the default system browser, at least for this part. You can change it back later if you want. Then, click on the PS Remote Play app. And your first time in, you will need to log in to your PlayStation account. This is the absolute worst part, the most miserable part of this whole experience. See, Sony's new capture system, to make sure you're a human logging into the account, is one of the absolute 
worst, most violently hostile and broken systems I've ever met. It is truly terrible. Just, just, just abusively horrific and i'm not alone in this either after spending half an hour bashing my face against it i found reams and reams of pages after pages online of people complaining about this monstrosity of a system countless people struggling to log in with it on all kinds of systems it is properly horrific what worked for me, eventually, was using the optional audio version, which ostensibly is an accessibility option. But let me tell you, as an autistic person with sensory input issues around hearing, it is not accessible. <sighs> Everyone at Sony who approved the use of this system, this crap, can go violate themselves with a syphilitic donkey dong as far as I'm concerned, and if I was in charge of the world, they would be exiled to a prison moon. But once you do eventually get it to work, and it did take me five more tries with the audio system alone, everything else is going to go pretty smooth. A couple of things to keep in mind though, when you boot the PS Remote Play app, it'll always default to a phone-like aspect ratio, because... Well, it, it, it's it's a phone app. And of course, the Quest does not have the uh, horizontal rotational sensors that phones do, so it can't tell you want it in landscape mode. So before you connect to your PlayStation, grab a corner or two and stretch it out to the screen size you want. Do not try to do this after you connect to your PlayStation because Sony are just kind of super shit at making apps. And for some reason, this always disconnects me. Super duper annoying. Anyway, from here, it'll just act like the app does on a phone or tablet or whatever. You will, of course, also want a controller connected. To put your PlayStation 5 controller in sync mode, hold the share button, that's the one to the left of the touchpad, and the PlayStation button. If I have to tell you which one that is, maybe you should try something simpler, like um, Play-Doh. Hold the buttons down until the lights flash quickly. You are now in pairing mode. So inside the headset, connect to it like any other Bluetooth device. You go to settings, you go to Bluetooth, you go to new device, all that jazz. Now, the one gotcha about using the controller, and this hung me up for a little while. I got very frustrated with it until I remembered what was going on because it's been a while since I've used the remote play app, but by default, it won't work inside the app. And doing something like tapping the circle button will prompt an exit from the app instead. So after you've synced your controller and after you've connected to your PlayStation in the app and before you try to play, press down the share button and the menu button, that's the one on the opposite side of the touchpad, tap them down together and this will change the mode for the controller within the app. And from here, it'll just behave like you expect, like, you know, a game controller. Now, one last thing to know. For some reason, again, likely Sony's catastrophic ineptitude, the touchpad on the PlayStation 5 controller will not work like this. And this is not an issue specific to the Oculus or our work around here. It's common on basically every platform, even official platforms that PS Remote Play works on. Even non-Android devices like the PC can face this problem. Sony are just, just it's not good at doing things. It's, it's so frustrating how many little hoops you have to jump through just for something so simple. Anyway, there is a rather idiotic workaround using two different PlayStation accounts. The basic workflow for that is on screen for you here. You can pause and work through it if you want. I've seen many reports of this working, but I cannot confirm personally that it works because frankly, it's a lot of fuss. I can't be bothered with it. And the two games that I am playing like this don't need the touchpad. Monster Hunter World slash Iceborne doesn't need it at all, and Spider-Man 2 has accessibility options to move the essential touchpad functions to the D-pad shortcuts instead. But depending on what you want to play here, your mileage may vary. Hopefully at some point Sony pulls their head out of their fetid rectum and just makes an app that works properly. In any case, now you can hopefully remote play your PlayStation 5 inside your Quest 3 in VR mode and indeed in mixed reality. And PlayStation 4 for that matter, if you're still last genning it, because, well, it's the exact same app for that too. And it all works well, pretty damn well. Monster Hunter here is a game where input timing is critical, and I mean critical. And although there is a tiny amount of extra lag because, well, at the physics, there is just extra steps going on with the video and audio having to be encoded, sent along the Wi-Fi and decoded uh, at the same time as sending the control inputs back. So just by nature, that induces a little extra latency. But it is indeed very, 
very small amount, and I had no worries at all with Spider-Man 2, a very fast-paced action game, which, which I did test, but I'm not showing much of in this video because I was a huge dumbass, and what I recorded was from the post-game, and I didn't realize that until I started editing. I went, oh, hang on a sec, I shouldn't show that in this video because the game is only a few days old, and I didn't want to be, you know, the spoiler jackass just, just springing up, oh, bloody, you should have put a spoiler warning. No, I, I just... Won't show the footage instead. <laughs> yeah, it's got the same kind of thing with the Master Rank monsters in Monster Hunter Iceborne. I had no worries. Well, not, not no worries, but no extra worries, uh, thanks to any kind of lag or anything. I mean, the, the game is tough to begin with. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I'm not even using the fancy new sort of low latency Wi-Fi 6 stuff. This was done just using ordinary Wi-Fi 5. So give it a go. Let me know how you get on and your favorite thing to play this way. But hopefully this has been useful and or interesting. If it has, a reminder, please do the thumb, sub, bell, all that kind of stuff. Thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there. I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.